just so wonderful, isn't it? Boy, isn't it good that when we can gather together here in the house of God, that God can move within our midst and comfort our hearts. And He knows exactly what we stand in need of and exactly how to touch that need and how to just take all of our problems and our worries and troubles away and just replace them with just joy and hope and uh, fulfillment of life. I tell you, it's really, really good. Uh, if you will please tonight, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 33. Deuteronomy chapter number 33, and I'd like to read verse number 24 and verse number 25. I'll give you a moment to find your uh, places in the Word of God. Deuteronomy. All right. Well, if you will please now stand with me, those that are able, as I read from the book of Deuteronomy tonight, verse 24 and verse number 25. The Bible says, and of Asher he said, Let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. And let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. I, Heavenly Father, I can never thank you enough for the way that you have not only blessed but looked after us. God, you've seen us through many trials and many times of tribulation. And Lord, I am so glad that, dear Heavenly Father, you are constantly with us, that you have never forsaken us and you have never left us. And I'm glad that we have in this old world someone that we can depend upon who's never changing. You're the same God today that you've always been. And what you've done for the children of Israel, dear God, and for many others throughout the Testament, God, you have done for us many times over as well. And Lord, I look to you tonight as my God. And I'm thankful that I'm saved tonight through the marvelous grace of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd use me tonight to bring forth this message. And Lord, I pray that you'll get all the honor and all the glory for it. For these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And you may be seated tonight. And truly, the Lord is in the house. Here we find that Moses now is facing the last days of his life. Moses now, can you believe it, is 120 years old. Moses had had a pretty interesting life, a very wonderful life. We can go back to the time that Pharaoh would have had him killed as a young baby of the Israelites, but his mother, of course, and his father seemed fit to disobey the law at that time and hide Moses for several months as long as they could without being detected. And then, of course, you know the old story how that they took Moses and put him in a little ark and placed him out there in the Nile River at a place where they really felt like that Pharaoh's daughter hopefully would be able to find him. And it was God's providence, and God had it all planned out for Moses' life just like God's got it planned out for our lives. There may be a lot of opposition against us in life, just like there were opposition against Moses in his life. Remember that if Pharaoh would have had his way, Moses, we would have never heard of him. But God had other plans for him. And regardless of what even the most powerfulest person in the world at that particular time had demanded, God is more powerful. So it doesn't really matter what mankind has to say or what mankind tries to do. It's God's power that always prevails in our lives. So Moses was taken in by the daughter of Pharaoh, and really he is brought up in the palace of Pharaoh. For 40 years he lived that type of life, being the daughter of, the, of, the, of, the daughter of Pharaoh. Oh, how good a life, no doubt, he must have enjoyed. Then through circumstances of different types, he, at 40 years old, felt a calling upon his life from God. And he really tried to go out and to try to serve God and to set things right in his own power. But that wasn't God's way, and it's not God's way today. It's not God's way that we try to do things in our own abilities. It's not God's way that we try to set things right in our own power. God sometimes has to humble us, break us if necessary, to a place where he then can remold us and make us that what he wants us to be. So during that time in Moses' life, when he was 40 years old, he wound up being out in the wilderness. There God had some very special lessons that he wanted to teach Moses because there was going to come a day that God was going to use Moses in such a marvelous, miraculous way. So for 40 years, God allowed him to tend sheep and goats. 
learning all the time how to take care and uh, how to do things for these sheep and these goats. Then when Moses was 80 years old, God appeared to him in a burning bush. What a marvel that was. You know, ain't it good when God shows up sometimes and we know that there's no doubt about it that it's God? When God showed up in that burning bush, it was something miraculous because no doubt Moses had seen bushes and trees and fires all his life. But there was something different about this bush. It wasn't being consumed. It was just a blazing fire. And the bush wasn't being burnt up. So Moses approaches the fire and guess what he finds out? That it was holy ground. And God had spoken unto Moses, take off your shoes for you're now walking on holy grounds. You want to know where holy grounds are? Wherever God is, is holy grounds. And so as he approached this fire, there's a voice that came out and began to speak to Moses. And it shared with Moses exactly what God had intended for Moses to do with his life. Now, isn't it reassuring to know that when God finally touches our life and when God speaks to us, as only God can speak to us, and we know that there's no doubt about it, that God has a purpose for our life. It is so fulfilling to know what God wants us to do, isn't it? I know a lot of times we struggle with that and we don't know exactly what God's wanting to do. And that's where patience comes in. And look at what Moses had to do for 40 years out there wandering in the wilderness and tending the flocks and things of that nature. God was preparing him for a great mission. And now God has spoken to Moses and had given him the go-ahead to go back and to do a unsurmountable task of trying to get Pharaoh, the most powerful person in the world at that time, to release about three million Jewish slaves. You know the story how that Moses went back somewhat reluctantly, but he went back and over a series of time, Pharaoh finally released the children of Israel, three million, three and a half million, somewhere close to that number, left Egypt itself going to the promised land. The land that had been promised to the Israelites 400 years earlier. But yet they wound up there in Egypt and become slaves to the Egyptians. But now God was getting ready to fulfill a promise that he had made to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. I like what Mark, Mike said when he began to sing tonight in the service. That he was looking for the Lord to return all last year. And he still looking and seeking for the Lord's return this year. Can you imagine how that the children of Israel felt when they had received the fulfillment of the promise of God that they would one day be set free and be given the opportunity to go into Canaan land? Friends, one day God's going to fulfill that wonderful promise that His Son Jesus Christ is going to return to this world. And His Son's going to return in such a miraculous way that a trumpet of God is going to announce it and a shout from glory is going to come. And every poor person that has been born again, every person that has been saved and been washed in the blood of the Lamb, every person who has received the Son of God as their personal Lord and Savior is going to take off out of this old world. Friends, as I take up through the sky, I like that one song that says, Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. Because you know what? I'm not going to have to be praying from here to there. I can be standing in face to face to him, eye to eye, and thanking him and praising him and giving him all the glory. One of these days that promise is going to be fulfilled. But here we find Moses about to die. Matter of fact, if you read on over in chapter number 34, you'll see where Moses does die. So what he is saying here in chapter 33 and in the verses that I just read to you should be of great importance. And they are of great importance because Moses was about to die. He was about to pass from this walk of life to the next. God had taken him out to Moab. And there in a place of Moab, he allowed Moses to look out over into the promised land. Moses wasn't going to get to go over into Canaan. But Moses got to see Canaan land. Then Moses' life was taken there on that uh, area there in Moab. And we know from the New Testament that something very unusual happened at that time when Moses died. Because when Moses died, the Bible tells us in the book of Jude that God sent an angel to take Moses' body. 
And the angel's name was Michael. And Michael came to retrieve the body of Moses and he ran into a confrontation with the devil. The devil didn't want to release Moses' body from this earth. Well, Michael being an archangel, I mean a powerful angel. Of course, Satan's a powerful evil angel. There's no doubt about it. But Michael, instead of trying to confront Satan in his own power, he just confronted him in the name of the Lord. And Satan had to bow out and bow away. And the body of Moses was taken up. And there God received Moses, received his body, because God's got some plans, uh, had some plans for Moses in the future. So now let's look at these words that Moses is saying to the children of Israel. Now in the last few verses here, or this particular in this chapter, Moses is telling each tribe of Israel what their inheritance was going to be in the promised land. And he was telling them that this portion of land is going to be yours. And that this portion of land is going to be the tribe of Dan. And he gets here into this verse of scripture here in verse number 24. And he's talking to the tribe of Asher. Now he says unto Asher that he wants Asher, the tribe of Asher, the people of Asher, to be blessed. I believe that God wants all of his children to be blessed. Do you not believe right there sitting in this auditorium tonight that God wishes for you personally to be blessed in such a wonderful way? God does want you to be blessed. And God will provide blessings upon you in very special manners. Just like he blessed us many times over this past year that we've just come through. And he looks and he tells the people of Asher... He says unto them, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. Let him dip his foot in oil. And that would be a great blessing for the people of Asher. But it's verse number 25 that kind of draws my attention because in verse number 25, God is saying something here that he didn't say to any of the other tribes of Israel. As a matter of fact, I don't think he said this to anybody else ever. Then, before then, or since then. Look at what verse number 25 says, and I wonder if it's caught your attention like it caught my attention. What does he say there to the tribes of Asher? He says unto them something very unusual. He says, thy shoes shall be iron and brass. That's very unusual. What kind of shoes did the children of Israel usually wear? Sandals made out of leather, sometimes strapped to wooden soles. But yet here God is saying to Asher, I want you to be blessed with children. I want your feet to be dipped in oil, which was a very soothing, comfortable thing. I want you to be accepted among your people, your brethren. But I want to know, I want you to know that you're going to be supplied with shoes that are of a very special nature. Now, the children of Israel are still out wandering in the wilderness at this moment. They hadn't crossed over into the land of Canaan. But they're getting ready to cross over, and a lot of things in their life is going to change drastically from what they've been experiencing for the last 40 years. Moses wasn't going to be leading them anymore, but we know that Joshua is going to be appointed. We know they're going to face battles and obstacles and all kind of things that they haven't had to face yet. But God was letting them have the promise that he had given unto his, their forefathers. Their lives were going to be changed drastically. They weren't going to have to wonder no more. They were going to be given a home, given a place, given land where they'd be able to establish their homes and families. What a wonderful undertaking here. But God says your shoes are going to be like iron and brass. My goodness. You know what? The children of Israel's shoes didn't wear out during them 40 years. It's in the Bible. They didn't wear out. Them sandals lasted for 40 years. But now God is saying, well, you're going to have to have something a little bit more, a little different than that leather strapping and those leather sandals because God knew what the tribe of Asher was going to have to go through. He knew the land that he had appointed to them. 
And when you do some background studying, you're going to find out that the land where the tribe of Asher was being placed, a lot of it was very rough land, mountainous land, mountainous and rocky exterior. God knew before he sent them in to that area that they would have to have a special kind of footing. Because the sandals of leather and so forth or barefoot wouldn't make it in that terrain. God was telling them, I'm going to look after you, even though you don't really know what all's coming your way. I want you to know that I do know, and I am providing for you the very things that can help you the best. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know that our God knows what tomorrow holds? Isn't that wonderful to know that God already has plans for us that are going to help us for next week? Things that God will do for us today are going to come in mighty handy somewhere along the way. Things that God has already foreseen that are going to come to pass maybe next year or the year after. God is making plans for our lives. And he is telling us not only here in this passage of Scripture but in other passages of Scriptures that he will supply and he will take care of us. So we're looking here and we're believing that God here is going to be with the children of Asher. He is going to lead them into the promised land. God knows that sometimes that as they go into the promised land that the way is going to be rough and it's going to be challenging. God was not promising the tribe of Asher that the way would always be easy. And I can't promise you tonight that the way before us is always going to be easy. I believe, though, really, truly, that we're going to see great times of blessings, just like we've seen this past year. I believe we're going to see miracles being performed, just like we have experienced miracles this past year. I believe we're going to see that in the year that is before us, the way that's awaiting us. I believe we're going to see those things, but I'm not a prophet by no means, but I also believe we're going to face some trials this year, individual trials this year. I believe we're all going to face some problems that are going to come up in our lives this year. I believe there's going to be some times that we're going through some valleys. There's going to be some times that there's going to be pretty rough footing along the way. God wants us to know that he sees before us the way which we're going. Our steps have already been ordered by the Lord. He's already set the path that he wants us to go down and for us to travel. And he's going to provide the means that we're going to need to see this year through. Not only the blessings, but he's going to provide the means for us to see the times of troubles, the times that we are going to be challenged as well. Friends, I know that sometimes the way might not be easy. But friends, rest assured that God will always be there with us. And he'll always see us through. So when we go through some rocky times and rough roads, God's already made the preparations for us to get through those rocky roads and those rough times. He provided the children of Asher with what they would need at the moment that they would need it most. But not only did he say unto them that your shoes there in verse number 25 are going to be made of iron and of brass, he says something else very important here that I want you to see. Look at what the rest of that verse says. And as thy day, now, I didn't just say, as a day may come. He said days there, meaning that it would be plural times. Not just one day that's waiting before you, but in the days that are before you. So shall thy strength be. We all realize where Samson's strength come from, don't we? I know he was a Nazarite, took a Nazarite vow, wasn't supposed to drink, wasn't supposed to cut his hair, things of this nature and another. But his strength come from the Lord. Amen. There were times when God was going to use Samson to do phenomenal things. And the Bible says that when God called upon Samson, one of the things that I noticed mostly is that the Spirit of God came upon Samson. So I'm led to believe that there's no problem about it that the Spirit of God strengthened Samson 
for the journey. That it was the Spirit of God that came and indwelt the body of Samson and give him powerful ability that he was able to go out and accomplish unbelievable things for the honor and the glory of Almighty God. I believe that God also gives us that special strength as well. I don't know if you've ever thought about this before, but just as much so as he strengthened Samson by the Spirit of God, I believe that as verse number 25 says, so shall thy strength be. When is our strength going to be sufficient? In the days that we need it. God already knows what we're going to face. And God says that when those days come, it doesn't matter what those days hold. God is saying just like he did for Samson, he's going to do it for you, Daniel. Just like God said, I can strengthen and I can do things for others. He is telling us, I can do it for you, Levi. Whatever you're going to face tomorrow, Levi. You want to know what God's going to do? He says, your strength will be there. You'll have the strength to face it. No matter what it is that you might be coming up against, God is saying, you'll have the strength to face it. What are some of the toughest things y'all faced last year? What are some of the things you faced last year? Anybody got anything in particular? Some people have been deathly sick. Some people have faced some tremendous trials last year. Some people had received terrible news last year. Some people lost loved ones last year. Did that catch God by surprise? Would you have been able to have faced it by yourself? What did God do for you last year? So as your days were, so shall thy strength be. Now I know that this year there's going to be some days that are going to be greater than we are. There are going to be some days that if it wasn't for God, we couldn't make it. Couldn't make it through. I know of two people that are attending church here that in the morning they're going to have, one's going to have a hip replacement and the other is a lady, she's going to have back surgery tomorrow. They're facing one of them days tomorrow. But you want to know something about that day? God says your strength will be sufficient. I'll look after you. I'll give you what you need in the hour that you need to face it. West is facing heart surgery. Coming up here the 12th, you know what God's telling you, Wes? He'll be there. He says, so shall thy strength be. Whatever you're going to face, Wes, God said, I'm not going to forsake Amen. you, and I'm not going to leave you alone. I'll give you the strength to face it. Amen. Some of you may lose a loved one this year. More than likely, some people in this church are going to pass away this year. People that you've known, loved, fellowshiped with, had great times with. Some of them are going to pass away. Maybe a spouse. May could even be a child. May could be your best friend. It'd be a situation that, oh, in your own, it would crush you. It would break you. It could destroy you. But God says, so as your days are. I'll give you enough strength to face it. I'll be there for you. I'll help you through those situations. Isn't it good to know that our God is not only with us right now, but he knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what we're going to face in a couple of months. God's already made preparations. God's already put things in motion. I think he did a pretty good job last year and the year before and so forth. We got the same God this year who says it doesn't matter what days and when these days come along, whatever your need is, I'm going to give you the strength to face it. And I mean sometimes it gets pretty tough, doesn't it? Sometimes, I mean, them trials are pretty rough. 
But God says, whatever happens to you, Asher, I know that where I'm placing you is not a place that you'd wear silk shoes. I'm telling you right now that I'm aware of the rough terrain that I'm going to ask you to go to. But when I supply you with the proper footing, I want you to know also I'm going to supply, supply you with the proper strength to see it through. What a God. What a God that we have. Isn't it wonderful to know that our God already knows and has made preparations for what we got ahead of us? And I'm glad to say right now, when I have some hard days before us, and we're all going to have some of those days, I don't have to worry about them. Why? Because the Bible says your strength will equal whatever it is that you need for that day. God says, I'll strengthen you. I'll give you that which you stand in need of. Boy, when sickness may come, and it may come to all of us at times during this year before us, we may all get some type of, some type of a, a diagnosis of, or another, but I want to tell you something, don't have to be afraid. Because whatever your days holds, God says, I'll give you strength to face it. When you face days of doubt, when you face days of trouble, when you face days of temptation and all these other things, you don't have to be afraid because your strength will equal the task. God knows what type of terrain you're walking in and what your needs are. Isn't this a powerful passage of Scripture that God here has showed us? And you want to know something? The older I get, the more precious this means to me. Here I am, 60 years old. I know you can't believe that. I've been cursed with this baby face all my life. But anyway, when I was 20 years old, it probably didn't make any difference to me at all about this right here. But you know, when I was 20, I could go and go and go and go and go and not get tired or weary. I almost thought I was bulletproof at times, doing some of the dumbest things you could have ever imagined. But when I got 30, man, I could still do pretty good. I could still work all, all day long and still hold up my end. But you know what? Sometimes around 40, I started noticing, well, I just can't quite do what I did when I was 20. But it's not too bad. But then when 50 turned around, and I was thinking, my goodness. But now 60. So is thy days, so shall thy strength be. I like what the Bible says when it talks about in the passage of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse number 16. The Bible there says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You know what? This old worn, tattered body, it is getting old. And it can't do what it used to do. But you know, inside, I still feel like a young man. And how is that? God said, I'll give you the strength. So as your days are, so shall your strength be. I'll give you that strength. Boy, I like when the Bible talks about it in the Second Corinthians chapter 12, and verse number 9. And I don't have that on there, Randy. But in Second Corinthians chapter number 9, Paul was asking the Lord to remove the thorns from his flesh. And the Lord wouldn't remove those thorns from his flesh. But we find out that in that passage of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, the Bible says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Friends, I... I'd rather go through the rest of this life with Jesus than anything I know of. And then he goes on to say in verse number 10, Therefore I take pleasure in affirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For, I, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Amen. I don't know what all is waiting before us. I don't know what all is waiting before you. But I know who does. And I know that he's given me a promise. He says, I'll give you strength enough to face the day that comes upon you. 
whatever it is. And you want to know something special about this? That if I have some problems and some difficulties tomorrow that God has to give me extraordinary strength to face that day, you know what? I'm not going to wear out that promise tomorrow. Because he didn't just say the day that you need. He said the days. You want to know what that means? That means even if I survive 2016, that I'm not going to exhaust that wonderful gift that comes from God who has promised me that so as my days are, so shall your strength be. I'll leave this old world with God as my strength and with God enabling me to face and to do things that I could never do without him. What a powerful passage of Scripture. There's some of you here tonight that are going to have to take off them slip, silk slippers. Some of you here tonight is going to have to change your foot because the way could get kind of rough and dangerous. But I want you to know something. Whatever it is that you might face, and I'm not here just to preach gloom and doom. I know there's going to be some good days ahead. And I hope there's a whole lot more good days ahead than there are trying days ahead. But even when we face some of those days, God says, I'll supply you with the strength to see it through. Some of you right now, right here tonight, might be facing some of those days. You're in some of that, some situation right now that is really draining you. And about to break you. And God is saying, I know what you're facing. And I know what you're going to have to go through. But I want you to know something. I'm going to give you the strength to see it through. Let's stand to our feet. Boy, isn't it good to know that we've got such a God... (laughs) That not only forgives us of our sins and prepares us a place in heaven, we got a God that cares about what we face while we're here on earth. He knows what you're facing right now. And He has promised us, God who has created this world, God who with just His voice can create the wonderful things that this world has already been blessed with. God has promised us that, well... Whatever it is you're going to face, I'm going to give you the ability to see it through. Sometimes the burden's going to be heavy. Sometimes the task is going to be difficult. But I'm going to give you the strength to see it through. I'll give you the strength in the day that you need it, the days that you need it. So if there's some here tonight that, well, you're going through or you're facing something, You just want to just thank God for how that he's already made a way that he's going to anoint you with a special strength. It might have been the loss of a loved one. It might be some other type situation. But God says, I'll give you the strength to face the days that are before you. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow before you, I want to thank you for being my God. I want to thank you for that special strength that can only come through you. I'm thankful, dear God, how that you can renew the inward man day by day. I'm thankful, dear God, that when I realize how weak I am, that's how great you are. Lord, I'm praying that for those that are gathered here today, some may already be going through a rocky road. Some may already be going through some tough terrain in their life. God, I'm praying that they'll ask you, give me strength. Oh, Lord, just give me strength to see this through. For these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If there's any that needs to come for whatsoever reason, would you come tonight? For whatsoever reason. God knows what you're facing. God knows what you're going to face. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe next week. Maybe next month. Whatever it is, God says, whatever that day holds, (laughs) your strength. I will give you to face it. Isn't that wonderful? What a God. Amen. That that excites me. What a God. Amen. Woo. What a God.
Amen. What a good day the Lord has given us. Let us bow and let us be dismissed in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, you truly have touched my heart today. Lord, you have blessed in great and mighty ways, far more so than we probably realize. Lord, continue now to go with us, lead, guide, and direct us. For these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless.